I've been doing software development for quite some time now, but mostly in the area of web development, so JavaScript, TypeScript, React, that sort of thing. I've always loved video games though, but other than a few small projects when I was first starting out learning how to code, I really haven't learned much game development. So I was trying to think of a fun project to do a little over a week ago, and I thought why not try to learn some game development for the first time seriously and also learn a game engine. I did some searching and came across Godot. It's a free and open source game engine that a lot of people seem to really like. So this is everything I learned and made in a little over a week of using Godot for the first time. So this is Godot here, and this is the first project I made. It's it's from the Godot tutorial on your first 2D game. And this game is pretty simple. You just have to dodge the enemies here and you get points as you last longer. But if you run into one of the enemies, then you lose the game, plays a sound effect and ends the game. Through this project, I learned that in Godot, everything is composed of nodes and those nodes make up scenes, which are kind of like reusable building blocks. So you can make a player scene, an enemy scene, a level scene, and then you can duplicate those, make as many as you want, put them in different scenes, things like that. It's really flexible. This is also where I learned that Godot uses GDScript, which is a language I haven't used before, obviously, because it's specifically for Godot, but it's based on Python syntax and I have some experience with that, so it wasn't too hard to pick up. So the next day I wanted to reinforce things I had already learned by trying to do things myself and make a new project. So I started out trying to make a game kind of like Vampire Survivors, where you have a character that moves around a map and fires projectiles at enemies and the enemies move in to chase you and you try to stay alive as long as possible. For this I decided to not strictly follow any tutorials, but just to look up things as I got stuck. So I went to itch.io to try to find some free assets I could use to make a game quickly because I didn't have any experience doing art myself yet. Then I started out trying to make the game. I first started out by just pulling in my character and getting it to walk around the screen and do an idle animation as it moved. This player scene was very simple, just an animated sprite, which plays back an animation and a collision shape that I was planning to use to detect when it collides with enemies. So now that I had the player moving, I wanted to add an enemy that would follow the player around the screen. And I was kind of nervous about this. I thought it could be kind of complicated. I wasn't sure how to actually write the math for that, but it turns out can even just do make things a lot easier. And it was actually pretty simple. In Godot, you can attach a script to any node to write code for that node. And then in the script, it will extend the class of that node. So in this case, my enemy is a character body 2D. So within a script, you have access to all the properties of that parent class. And that is pretty useful. So you can get the position, you can get any properties it has in the inspector, things like that. It's a pretty cool system. So to get my enemy moving towards the player, I needed to get access to the player node from the main scene, which I had just put in a group called player. Now, since I had access to the player's position and the enemy's position, all I had to do was write this little bit of code in the physics process function. And then when you hit play and run the game, you can see that the enemy is just following me around. And yeah, I was just really impressed by how easy this was to get working. <laughs> so next I wanted to actually add a weapon for the player to hit enemies with to kill them. So I did that and you can see my player now is firing arrows in the direction they're pointing. And if I hit an enemy, enough times it will die. <laughs> you can see here within the player scene, I have a weapon timer node that is called every 0.3 seconds. To fire the weapon whenever this timer times out, I use Godot's signals function, which is kind of like events in JavaScript or other similar things. So I was kind of familiar with the concept. Basically nodes can dispatch an event or a signal when something happens and different nodes have different signals. The timer you can see here has a timeout signal. I also had added player health so that if I actually run into an enemy here, you can see my health goes down. I also actually used the timer within the enemy scene to make sure that it wasn't constantly hitting the player as long as it was colliding and that it would only hit it every half a second so that you wouldn't just instantly die when you're running into enemies. So next I added actual enemy spawning so that there is more than one enemy on the screen at a time. And also I added a little hit effect where the color of the enemy modulates a bit to show you that you've actually hit them with the arrow and that makes it a bit more clear what's going on. Adding that little effect was once again quite easy. All I had to do was in the take damage function in my enemy script, I changed sprite.modulate to a different color. And then I create a temporary timer that just runs really quickly in 0.1 seconds, wait for it to time out and then change the color back. So it just adds a really nice little effect for spawning 
spawning the enemies, I actually just made a new scene, the enemy spawner, and I would just wait for a timeout again on the timer and then spawn a new enemy in the world. And this wasn't quite working. It was kind of spawning them sometimes in the screen, but I basically just wanted to spawn them away from the player so that they would walk towards the player and it was working well enough. At this point, I was thinking the background looked a little boring, so I decided to change that up with some randomly generated tiles so that it looks more interesting. And also I'm now moving the camera with the player so that I can actually move around the screen and run away from enemies. And I also added a little hit effect on the player when you are taking damage so that you know that you're actually taking damage. I also fixed the code so the enemies actually always spawn off the screen as well. To create the background, I'm using the tile map node in Godot, which is really flexible. And I used it a bit more in some other projects that I'll go into. So at this point, I had been working on this for a few days on and off, and I was happy with the things I was learning so far. I didn't really want to make it into a full game, but I felt like I was learning a lot. And one thing though that was bothering me is that I was just using free art from itch.io, which is probably what you should do if you're learning game development. You don't need to learn how to make art and games at the same time. But I decided I wanted to try to learn pixel art for fun. So I watched a bunch of tutorials on pixel art and making pixel art for games. And I learned about a sprite, a program pretty much everyone uses to make pixel art. And I started out trying to make some things in a sprite. I made this chicken with this really squishy animation. <laughs> And then I tried to make a character for this game and I came up with this elf here and I drew her in three different angles and I came up with some very basic animations that aren't the best here. <laughs> and yeah, this, this walk one is especially not very good, but I added her into the game and I also made this demon enemy here based on referencing the one I was using before. And this one's, you know, not so bad actually. I added this little wing animation and then I put them in this game and this is the final version of this game I made. So there's my character. <laughs> she walks. <laughs> Definitely looks worse now, but you know, I can say I made it myself. <laughs> so yeah, this is the final version of this game so far. And after this, I moved on to some other projects. At this point, I decided I wanted to mess around with Godot's tile system a bit more. So I decided to try to recreate something I've already done before, procedural terrain generation, and do it within Godot, within the Godot tile system. And this is what it looks like in the end here. You can just move around the map that is procedurally generated based on noise. And once again, I was impressed by how easy it was to get things working in Gato. So to get this working, all I did was add a tile map node and then I added a script to the node and it just based on code I had written before in JavaScript. Godot has noise built in and it's easy to work with. All you have to do is get an instance of this fast noise light class, then you can set the type of the noise. I use simplex noise here. I'm definitely interested in messing around more with procedural generation in general in Godot. So for this, rather than going back to the vampire survivors tech game that I was working on, I decided I wanted to learn some new things and I was curious about doing more complicated animations and collisions and things like that. So I set out to try to learn how to make a 2D platformer. I started out by going to itch.io and finding an existing character I could use that has a bunch of animations already like jump, attack, and run. So I didn't have to do this from scratch and it also looks a lot better than anything I can do right now. So this is the first version I got working. This character is pretty fun and yeah it just has the basic animations playing. There's a jump, there's a run, and that's pretty much it. It also has a camera following the player, although it's pretty slow <laughs> and not too much interesting going on yet. Before this, I had been using animated Sprite 2D, which is a simple way to do animations, but I realized I needed more control. So I switched over to using the animation player, which allows you to keyframe different properties. So for example, if I needed to move the collision shape of the player in the animation, I could do that by keyframing it. Getting these animations working was actually surprisingly tricky, probably the hardest thing I had dealt with yet. And part of that is because the art assets I was using using had different sizes for different animations for the sprite sheets so things wouldn't be properly aligned when I brought them in and also some of the animations for example the jump actually moved the sprite up as the animation went on but if you're actually moving the character's position via code you don't want the sprite to actually move because then it will just kind of jump up. I ended up actually just going into a sprite myself and changing them so that they'd be the same size so it would be easier to work with within Godot but yeah I ran into a bunch more complications that I was expecting just doing the animations. The code for this was honestly a little messy as well and it continued to get confusing. I ended up rewriting this later on and I'll show you that. But yeah, it was working well enough. At this point I knew I eventually wanted to add enemies that I could hit with my sword because I really wanted to learn how that works and how to set that up. So I went to my pixel art that I had made and I added in this beautiful chicken here. <laughs> 
<laughs> pretty proud of this one, like how squishy it is. And when I first added to the game here, as you can see, when I press space to jump, <laughs> the chicken is also hooked up to the same movement controls as the player. So yeah, it just moves around. <laughs> Although you can actually control the player with WSD and the chicken with arrows, so it's kind of something on its own. Oh, look, it's on my head. <laughs> this enemy scene here started out pretty simple, just an animated sprite and a collision shape for the physics. So I thought the black background was getting a little boring, so I decided to make a better background, and I started out by just first adding this image here, I still have my chicken jumping with me. And this looks better, but I was really in a phase of trying to learn everything and random things, and I wanted to add a parallax background to make it even look cooler. So at this point, you can see here I have a parallax background node, which is just a built-in node that helps with this in Godot, and then parallax layers, and I got these sprites again from itch.io. There are some great asset packs out there. The idea here is that different layers of the background will move at different speeds relative to the camera to give it a sense of dimension. So when I hit play here, you can see that when I'm walking, different layers in the background are moving at different speeds, and yeah, it just looks a lot cooler now. <laughs> One thing I also realized at this time is that the player could just fall off the world map and not get back on it, so I tried to add a way to get back by just bringing them back up, but <laughs> kind of forgot to decrease their speed so they just get infinitely faster, <laughs> but then they're fine, see? <laughs> Don't worry, I did fix this in my next commit. So then I decided I wanted to try to figure out how to actually let my player attack the chickens. <laughs> And to do that, I had to think about how to enable collisions just when the player is actually attacking when the animation is in progress. So my player scene here, I started out by adding an area 2D, which just lets you get collisions in an area. And I added two different collision shapes for when the player is looking to the right and when they're looking to the left. And then I wanted to only enable these collision shapes when the player was actually swinging their sword and the sword was within this collision box. And to do that, I was actually just calling different functions on the player script when the animation was in progress, because you can do that with the animation player, you can keyframe pretty much anything, including function calls. So I would just keyframe this enable attack collision shape method, and that would get called from my player class and enable the correct collision box depending on if the sprite is flipped or not. So you can see here with collision shapes enabled in debug mode, that when I swing, it is enabling the collision shape just during the swing. Now, in addition to the swing, I thought it'd be really fun if there was a cool effect when you hit a chicken. So I looked up some videos on Godot's particle system and came up with a pretty cool effect <laughs> where the chicken shatters into a million pieces whenever you hit it. And this is probably my favorite thing I did. It's so fun. <laughs> Especially when you hit the big chicken and just to do this, I'm just using Godot's built-in GPU Particle 2D node, and then I tweaked a lot of different things within the node settings, and I used the actual chicken texture as the base for this, so that it kind of slices up into a million pieces, and there's more going on here, I won't go into it now, but yeah, it's just a really fun way to add a cool effect to the game. So at this point, I realized I was approaching the end of what I wanted to do with this project, but I wanted to make the character animation system a lot better, because it was very flimsy and messy, and it wasn't working as I wanted it to, so I ended up just rewriting the character animation code to what you see here. It's still kind of complicated. I also had to do some different things for the jump animation to make it look better, so yeah, there's a lot of different things going on here, and I might do it a different way next time, but I think I learned a lot. I also added some movement code to the enemies so they move across the platforms and don't fall off because they have ray cast nodes that check to see when they're about to fall off and instead reverse the direction. And then I added some sound effects, and this is the final version. <laughs> I still love that effect. I feel like the sound effects really add a lot, actually. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this. Oh, <laughs> forgot I added that. It's obviously not a full game, but I feel like it could become one if I wanted it to be, and I think I learned a lot from it, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this final result. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I worked on over the course of around a week with Godot, and I had a ton of fun with it. I'm still obviously quite new to game development as a whole, but I feel like the different projects I worked on over this past week have given me a really strong starting foundation to make other things and to know what to search for when I get stuck. I feel like my next step is to try to come up with a small game I can implement 
all the way through with an actual goal of mine because all these projects I was just kind of trying to learn the engine mostly and learn the different concepts but I wasn't really working towards something in particular so I think it would be good to have an actual goal of what I'm creating so I know how to make design decisions. Overall I'm really impressed with Godot so far. It makes things that I thought would be hard a lot easier and it does have some issues I've run into. I've had some scripts get overwritten, some crashes, things like that but overall I think it's been a great tool and I'm excited to learn more of it. GD script as a language is also pretty intuitive and I've been enjoying working in it so far. I do prefer stronger typing though to make things less error prone, but you can add types like you would in TypeScript and GDScript as well. It's optional, but I've been doing it and I think it makes things a lot better. One thing I was struggling with, which isn't really related to Godot necessarily itself, is that I kept wanting to find the absolute best way to do any particular thing at any given time. And that's really not necessary. I think you should really just go with what works first. And then if you run into problems down the line and you need to optimize things, you can do that but it's probably not that important to worry about doing things the absolute best way right off the bat. Let me know if you'd like to see more Godot related videos in the future. I've been having a lot of fun with it and I think it might be fun to make some tutorials. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.